Hello everyone. Today we are going to derive, well not derive, but we are going to solve the governing differential equation of a rectangular plate that is subjected to uniformly distributed transverse load. There you can see the rectangular plate that is subjected to uniformly distributed transverse load. And you could also see that the rectangular plate is uh, simply supported. Okay. And what we are actually going to do is we are going to solve the differential equation of this rectangular plate. Well, the obvious question is why do you want to solve the differential equation in the first place? Uh, we have to solve the differential equation so that you can actually find the deflection at any point in the rectangular plate. The next obvious question will be, well, why do you want to find the deflection at any point in the rectangular plate? You want to find the deflection at any point in the rectangular plate because that enables you to find the stress at any point in the rectangular plate. So that's all. That's the obvious reason why you want to take this effort and solve this differential equation. So to begin with, so first let me define the geometric properties of this rectangular plate. This um, rectangular plate has got a length of magnitude A, it has got a breadth of magnitude B and it is simply supported that you, could, you can see that. The height of the rectangular plate is H. Well, the height is not uh, explicitly shown here, but the height of the rectangular plate is H. And uh, this rectangular plate is subjected to uniformly distributed load. That is shown by the red arrows there, uniformly distributed load. That indicates the UDL and it is denoted by the letter uh, Q there, okay? Now, let us see the governing differential equation. Uh, we will be deriving this governing differential equation, but this particular video is to solve this governing differential equation by Galerkin's weighted residual method, okay? And um, there you can see the governing differential equation. It is EH cubed divided by 12 into one minus nu squared dou power four W by dou x power four plus two into dou power four W by do x squared do y squared plus do power 4 w by do y power 4 minus q is equal to 0. Now you know what is what in this governing differential equation? E for x modulus h for the thickness. You can also call it as the height. Uh, we used the length as a and the breadth as b. You can call the thickness as the height. Well, the h for thickness. And nu is the Poisson's ratio. And W is the vertical deflection, it's the transverse deflection. So that's the governing differential equation. And this term, EH cubed divided by 12 into 1 minus nu square, that is analogous to uh, flexural rigidity that you see in beams. In beams, the flexural rigidity is given by EI. Here we simply say that the flexural rigidity is EH cubed divided by 12 into 1 minus nu square. Now, coming to the uh, boundary conditions, you know that because it is a simply supported rectangular plate, its uh, deflection is going to be zero on all the four sides. Okay, the deflection is going to be zero. And the bed, analogous to bending moment, okay, I, I would not simply call this as bending moment, but because bending moment is the term, okay, that is predominantly used for beams. But this is analogous to bending moment, that is dou squared w by dou x squared. You can hit it with the ei to represent it, uh, to bring it closer to the bending moment. But this is going to be zero, okay? At uh, dou squared w by dou x squared, it's going to be zero. And also dou squared w by dou y squared it can be equal to zero. So these are the boundary conditions, okay? At the, I mean, these are the boundary conditions at the supports. We will not be using these boundary conditions, but nonetheless, nevertheless, um, we, we, we will be using this boundary condition uh, to justify the trial solution that we are good as okay? Now, we are going to solve this problem, but I have to tell you guys that it's going to take some time to solve this problem. So, uh, I'm just going to solve this problem manually and uh, it's going to take some time, okay? So maybe you may want to watch this uh, patiently to understand how to solve this problem by Galerkin's weighted residual method. Okay, here we go. 
the flexural rigidity is given by the notation d where d is eh cube divided by 12 into 1 minus nu square all right so there you go it's capital d into dou power 4 w by so that's the governing differential equation and this is the flexural rigidity as indicated okay the first step is to assume a trial solution so let me assume a trial solution the trial solution that we are going to assume uh, is assumed in such a way that it actually satisfies the essential boundary conditions and also it's going to satisfy the derived boundary condition i hope my yes it is working all right just give me a second i hope well, my tablet is stuck just a minute i hope okay i hope it's working now okay the first step is to assume a trial solution so trial solution in the sense we are as going to assume a solution for w so it's w of x comma y is equal to well it's not working it should be okay i'm sorry for the delay i hope this is fine now so yes it's working now so the vertical deflection w at any point x comma y we are assuming a trial solution it can be given by the equation a not okay it can be given by the equation a not into sin pi x over a into sin pi y over b okay so that's the trial solution that we are going to assume so this is step number one now you may ask me this question how do you say that this is the trial solution that you have to assume well if you just apply the four boundary conditions essential and the derived then this trial solution is going to satisfy the boundary conditions so that's the reason why we are actually going to assume this trial solution say for example say put at x is equal to zero then this deflection becomes zero because at x is equal to zero y is equal to zero the deflection should be zero because there is a support there okay and also at x is equal to zero at y is equal to zero dou square w by dou x is square at that point because if we differentiate this trial solution two times you'll be ending up with sine term because one time differentiation of sine is cos and two times differentiation of sine is i'm sorry cos uh, two times differentiation of sine is again sine okay so anyway you, you see that it's actually satisfying the essential boundary conditions and the derived boundary conditions you can also see that uh, when you substitute at x is equal to a um then at y is equal to zero say for example then when you plug it here then it becomes sine pi you know that sine n pi is going to be zero so uh, we have we have very solid reason why we have to assume this particular trial solution because it's actually satisfying the essential boundary condition and also it satisfies the derived boundary condition good i think step one is quite fine now step number two is what i'm going to do is i'm going to find dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 so let me try that now why do this is step number two okay step number two okay i'm going to find dou power 4 w divided by dou x raised to the power 4. now why do i want to find that because you see that dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 you see that term sitting in the governing differential equation if you want i can highlight that so you could see that term dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 that's sitting in the governing differential equation that's the reason why i want to find dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 so we can find dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 it's going to be a naught into well differentiate this equation partially with respect to x so i'm going to take a minute one time every time i differentiate i'm going to take this pi by a outside so i'm going to differentiate this four times so i'll be getting pi by a raised to the power four so that's it okay and i will be getting the same term 
because one time differentiation is cos, two times sine, three times cos, four times sine. Of course, you will end up with a minus sign when you differentiate cos, but since you have got two minus signs, minus and minus becomes plus. All right, so then you get the same term. It's going to be sine uh, pi x over a into sine uh, pi y over b. Okay. So that's dou power 4 w by dou x power 4. Okay. Next, in exactly the same manner, I'm going to find dou power 4 w by dou y raised to the power 4. So let me do that. So maybe I can write it here, dou power 4 w by dou x power 4. So here we go. Dou power 4 w by dou y raised to the power 4. That's going to be equal to a naught into in exactly the same manner but except for a i will get b pi by b raised to the power 4 into sine pi x or a into sine pi y or b all right then i think i have got dou power 4 y by dou y, dou y power 4 which means that i have got this term where is the highlight term well, I have got uh, uh, this particular term, right? Good. Next, I'm going to find dou power 4 w by dou x squared dou y squared. So let me try that. So here we go. So I'm going to find dou power 4 w divided by dou x square dou y square. Well, that can be written as dou square divided by dou x square into dou square w divided by dou y square. Okay. So now what is demanded is dou square w by dou y square. Well, I can do that. Dou square by dou x square. And I'm going to differentiate this w two times with respect to y. Well, if I differentiate W two times with respect to Y, I will be getting A naught into pi by B, the whole square, that's two times the differentiation, uh, into the same sine pi x over A into sine pi Y divided by B. So let me check that. So one times you differentiate, you get cos. Two times if you differentiate, you get minus sign. So I think there is a minus sign here. Okay. I hope this works. Okay. Next, I'm going to differentiate this two times with respect to x. So I'll be ending up with a minus sign. So now it becomes clear that minus and minus is going to become plus. So let me try that. So differentiate this two times. Now, with respect to x, so I'll be getting my minus and minus becomes plus a naught. Well, this time I'm going to get pi by a whole square into pi by b, the whole square, into sine pi x over a into sine pi y over b okay so that's the value of uh, uh dose dose square i'm sorry dou power 4 w by dou x square dou y square okay i think i have got all the ingredients that are demanded in the governing differential equation you see that the governing differential equation dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 that we got dou power 4 w by dou x square dou y square that we got dou power 4 w by dou y power 4 that we got now mathematics is just like moving objects you know what's dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 what you're going to do is you're going to take that value and you're going to plug it here so okay okay so let us try and plug those values in the governing differential equation we can consider that to be step number three okay so let me try that so step number three uh, we are going to plug the value of dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 dou power 4 w by dou x square dou y square 
and dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 in the governing differential equation. So d into dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 that is a naught into pi divided by a raised to the power 4 okay into sine pi x divided by a into sine uh, pi y divided by b all right good 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 plus um, 2 into dou power 4 w by dou x square dou y square so what's that value well, that is here so i'm going to take this and i'm going to plug it here so plus 2 into a naught into pi divided by a the whole square into pi divided by b the whole square into sine pi x over a into sine uh, pi y divided by b okay that's good plus those uh, i'm sorry yes plus dou power 4 w by dou y power 4 where is it um here we go so plus a naught into pi divided by b raised to the power 4 into sine pi x divided by a into sine uh, pi y divided by b getting a little lengthy we will try okay i think that's visible to everyone should be minus minus sign is there minus q is equal to zero so i have substituted all the ingredients that are demanded in the governing differential equation so but i should not be calling this as zero but i think i should call this as the residual because you assumed a trial solution there is no guarantee that this trial solution is going to satisfy the governing differential equation maybe the trial solution satisfies the governing differential equation that's perfectly fine but if the trial solution is not satisfying the governing differential equation then there is a residual that crops up okay so which means that when you substitute the value of dou power 4 w by dou x power 4 2 plus add it with 2 times dou power 4 w by dou x squared y squared plus uh, dou power 4 w by dou y power 4 you should get q which is the rate of loading right I mean, after hitting it with the flexural rigidity, you should get Q. If you are getting Q, perfect. If you are not getting Q, then there is an error. We call that error as the residual. Now, there is a physical meaning for the error. The physical meaning is the rate of loading, okay? Uh, unnecessary rate of loading. That is the meaning of the residual, okay? So, I don't want to get too much into this. Let us concentrate on the mathematics. Now, you can see that um yes sine pi x over l this term this term and this term i think we can take them common take it common outside so let us try this okay so let us try and take that term common outside so it is d into the term that we are going to take it out take it out is sine pi x divided by a into sine pi y divided by b so that's the term i'm going to take it common outside okay fine that's a little that's a funny bracket into a naught I, I think i can also take the a naught term common outside so i can bring this a naught that is also common so I'm bringing that outside. So uh, let me erase this. Yeah. Okay. So what is the term that is left out? Uh, you are left out with pi by a raised to the power four. Um, what I what else I can take outside? I think I can also take pi raised to the power four outside. I think I forgot that, but. I think I can also take pi raised to the power 4 outside. So I will write it here. I am also taking pi to the power 4 outside. So what is the term that is left inside? I will be left out with 1 by a raised to the power 4. I can say 1 by a raised to the power 4 can be written as 1 by a squared the whole square. 
plus two times um you i get it i get one by a the whole square into one by b the whole squared since we have taken the pi outside plus i can write this term as one by b square the whole square okay all right minus q and that should be equal to the residual now if you look at this term so i can use a highlighter uh, if you look at this term this term it's of the form a square plus b square plus 2ab okay it is of the form a plus b the whole square so what is a it's 1 by a square that's in the place of a what is b 1 by b square that is in the place of b so i can write this term as 1 by a square plus 1 by b square the whole square okay so that becomes easy so in the next step i'm going to do exactly that so in the next step um, it's going to be capital d into a naught into pi raised to the power 4 into sine pi x over a into sine pi y over b okay into i can write this term as 1 by a square the whole square plus i mean a plus b the whole square okay i'm sorry so it should be it's one oh, okay so where is it yes plus one by b square so it's a plus b the whole square okay fine so put a bracket there minus q is equal to r okay good so that's our residual i don't think uh, it can be simplified any further since it cannot be simplified any further what i will do is i think that's not a very good way to put the bracket so i can highlight it i can use okay so that's our residual good it looks good okay so now uh, step number four right step number four is we are going to apply galatkin's waiter residual method so what is galatkin's waiter residual method saying galatkin's waiter residual method is saying that it is integral of w into r over the domain is equal to zero so that's what galatkin's waiter residual method is saying by invented by galatkin in the year 1915 okay so so uh, let me do exactly that so in place of residual we have this big equation sitting there and we are going to integrate over the entire domain the domain is of course it's going to be double integral you have to integrate with respect to a you have to integrate i mean you have to integrate with respect to x and you also have to integrate with respect to y okay so i'm not going to put double integration but now for time being what i will do is i will say it's integral over the domain entire domain w is the wing function which is nothing but the trial solution with the constants remote so what is the trial solution so well this is the trial solution it, uh, you see that's the trial solution that you see that's the trial solution a naught is sine pi x by a into sine pi y by a by b so you get rid of the constant a naught so that's going to be your wing functions okay so wing function is clear so i'm going to substitute the um, uh, wing function which is sine pi x by a into sine pi y by b and i'm going to hit it inside this term so what i will get is i get capital d into if i multiply by the wing function i will be getting a naught into pi raised to the power four i want to save some time so i'm taking this w which is sine pi x by a into sine pi y by b inside so i'll be getting sine square pi x by a because i'm multiplying by sine by the wing function wing function is sine pi x by a into sine pi y by b okay into sine pi y i'm sorry sine square pi y divided by b okay into uh, 1 by a square plus 1 by b square the whole square put a bracket there minus q 
is equal to zero. So that's what Galois conservator is method saying. Of course, you are going to integrate with respect to the entire domain and then equate it to zero. Okay. Now, in order to make sure that this equation looks a little less complex, I think I made a mistake. Just one second. I can't fix it. I think you all, I failed to multiply, hit this Q with the weighing function. Yes. It's minus of Q with the weighing function, which is sine pi x over A into sine pi y divided by B. Yeah, that's right. So the whole term is integrated with respect to the domain, which is with respect to x and with respect to y, and equated to 0. Okay, fine, good. In the next step, what I'm going to do is I I'm going to um, make this equation looks a little less humongous. It looks a little bit complicated, but let me try my best to make it look a little less humongous. So you see that uh, whatever terms that I'm going to highlight, and those terms are actually constants. You see this term, it's a constant. This term, it's a constant. And uh, A naught, it's a constant. Pi raised to the power 4, it's a constant. And uh, even when you hit it with D, even that is a constant. Okay. So what I will do is I will take all these constants out, which means the terms that are indicated by this uh, shaded by the red color, and I'm going to call that term as alpha for simplification. So let me do that so that our equation can look a little less complex. So here we go. So take the terms and call them as alpha. So what is alpha? Alpha is equal to capital E into A naught into pi raised to the power 4 into 1 by A square plus 1 by B square the whole square okay i mean whole square so that is our alpha okay hope that is clear so i think that i'm not making any mistakes so it's d into yeah all these are bracketed terms so i can call them okay so this uh, note that this d is only for the first term first term okay it's uh, the d should not be multiplied with q if you look at the governing differential equation, that becomes very clear. So now the equation can look a little less severe. So you can see that it's integral over the domain. Uh, it's going to be now, it's simply alpha into sine square pi x divided by a into sine square pi y divided by b. I'm going to integrate the first term alone with respect to the domain minus integrate the second term alone with respect to the domain sine pi x divided by a into sine pi y divided by b with respect to the domain and then equate it to zero okay well then uh next what i'm going to do is see uh um, you know, I once uh, remember a professor say that if you want to be a very good mathematician, you have to be very lazy. So I'm going to integrate with respect to um, the x and I'm going to integrate with respect to y. If I'm going to integrate with respect to x, the y terms are all can be treated as constants. And if I'm integrating with respect to y, the x terms are all going to be treated as constants. Okay. Now, because uh, you have the same time, it's, it's a kind of symmetry. You see, you have sine square pi x by a. So whatever you are going to integrate, when you integrate sine squared pi x by a, when you integrate sine squared pi y by b, instead of x, uh, you, you are going to get essentially the same, but instead of x, you get y. That's it. Okay. So I'm going to pull that trick and I'm first going to integrate only with respect to x. And then I'm going to multiply what I will get if I integrate with respect to y. Okay. Uh, I, I, I think I'm slightly confusing you, but anyway, stay with me. So I'm going to integrate, uh, let me take this constant, alpha. I'm not going to consider the y term, just to avoid the confusion. I'm not going to consider the y term. I will be considering only the x term. The x term is sine square pi x divided by a. So that's the x term. 
time being i am not writing the y term so i am going to integrate only with respect to x okay later on i will be integrating i know the answer what i will be getting when i integrate with respect to y and i will multiply okay so now i am going to integrate with respect to x the limit is from 0 to a okay the length of the rectangular plate that's the limit and similarly minus uh, q is a constant i can bring it outside i'm going to integrate only with respect to x uh, for time being i'm not going to write what is y so sine pi x over a uh, i'm going to integrate only with respect to x equated to zero of course the limit is from zero to a all right then so in the next step i'm going to say it's uh, integral over the limit zero to a uh, alpha and sine squared theta can be written as one minus cos two theta whole divided by two so in place of theta i get pi x by a one minus cos two theta divided one minus cos two theta whole divided by two okay so into dx minus q into integral over the limit zero to a sine pi x over a with respect to dx equated to zero okay now i can integrate this term alpha by two is a constant bring it outside the integral if i integrate one i get x upon the substitution of the limits i get a if i integrate cos i get sine upon the substitution of the upper limits and the lower limits you get sine n pi it's zero so i will be left out with only the a term there okay so let me i'm becoming more and more lazy see i'm not writing the steps because i'm saying that integration of cos is sine 2 pi x by a into a by 2 pi but when you substitute the limits that sine term vanishes like a puff of a sand okay minus q into if i integrate the sine term i get uh, minus cos minus cos pi x divided by a in divide divided by pi by a okay so i can instead of dividing by pi by a, i can write it as a by pi over the limit zero to a so that should be equal to zero of course uh it's not uh accurate because i'm i have, I have ignored the y terms integration of y term okay now i so let me do one more step okay so now it's going to be alpha by alpha i think it i can write this um write this as a by two okay a by two minus q into okay whatever terms that are kept inside it's going to be minus a by pi uh if i substitute the upper limit i get cos 180 degree that's minus one if i substitute the lower limit minus of cos zero degree one so it's minus one so that's it and that should be equal to zero so it's alpha into a by two uh, minus q into uh, what is the term that you i will be getting minus into minus becomes plus so it becomes 2a divided by pi and that should be equal to zero now let us go back i ignored the y term sine squared pi y divided by b so what is that you will be getting if you integrate in exactly the same manner what for the exact same procedure if you integrate with respect to uh, y what is that you will be getting instead of a by 2 you will get b by 2 so i think i have to write it in a slightly different color so you will be getting instead of a by 2 b by 2 so you have to multiply by b by 2 and you will be getting instead of 2a by pi you will you would have got 2b by pi that's it 2b divided by pi i hope that makes sense okay so in the next step i can write it's going to be alpha into a b divided by 4 minus 2 q a b divided by pi square and that is equal to zero now i can find what is the value of alpha so i can i think i can cancel a b on either side that goes away so alpha is equal to so it's 2 q divided by pi square i think i get 8 q divided by pi square so that's alpha 
uh, that's it that's alpha good good next i'm going to substitute the value of alpha i hope everything works perfectly fine so the value of alpha is d into a naught into pi to the power four uh yes so what i will do is i am going to copy this term so let me use the tool to copy this term alpha and uh, let me copy this term bring it here okay so that's our alpha so alpha is this term okay and that should be equal to uh, 8 divided by 8 q divided by pi squared so uh, let me do this very quickly so it's going to be d this term should be equal to 8 q divided by pi square i think in the next step i can just find the value of a naught so the value of a naught a naught is equal to um, 8 q divided by capital d into pi raised to the power 6 into 1 divided by 1 by a square plus 1 by b square the whole square okay all right then so okay it's uh, 8 q divided by d into pi raised to the power 6 into 1 divided by 1 plus a square plus 1 by b square the whole square okay all right so i think i can we can just go ahead and substitute the value of capital d here so capital d will be e h cube divided by 12 into 1 minus mu square okay so that term um, can e h cube divided by 12 okay so that's the value of a naught that we are getting so let us cross check this value of a naught and let us make sure that we didn't do any mistakes okay let's cost to theta whole divided by two this is going to be minus uh, a by pi minus two two plus our four did i did we just make a mistake yeah i think we made a mistake okay yes i'm sorry sorry very t i'm terribly terribly sorry i think we made a mistake here it's two twos are four it's four here so yes it's four if that is four then this term should be 16 so let me erase that okay so this term should be 16 so 16 q divided by pi squared so here if you substitute the value as 16 then here instead of 8 you will be having 16 so let me erase that so instead of 8 it should be 16 here again instead of 8 it should be 16 okay that's the value of uh, a naught that's perfectly fine so that's the value of a naught i think we have got the value of a naught now the last step is to take this value of a naught and plug it back in the trial solution okay so the trial solution that we assumed is w is equal to a naught in this case it's going to be 16 q divided by d is e h q divided by 12 into 1 minus nu square um into pi raised to the power 6 into 1 divided by 1 by a square plus 1 by b square the whole square so that's the value of w uh, w is equal to a naught okay that's the value of a naught into sine uh, pi x over a into sine uh, pi y over b okay so that's the value of w 
okay so that's the solution so now what you can do is you can take the solution and you can plot it in uh, matlab and you can see how the deflection of the plate would look like okay now once you know this value, so see uh, this this is the equation that enables you to find the value of deflection at any point in some textbooks what they do is they they keep instead of pi power 6 they keep pi raised to the power 4 they take this pi squared inside this um, inside this bracket so you'll be getting pi squared by a squared uh, plus pi squared by b squared the whole square okay either way it's going to be the same but done this is the solution now what we will do is uh, we will uh, i will show you the results that are plotted in matlab so there you can see uh, this is the code uh, that you can just type in matlab and you can just run it so you can have the value of uh, i think it's very small i'm sorry about that okay i think i can zoom it so there you can see the value of e is uh, it's it's a steel plate so 2 into 10 raised to the power 5 the poisons ratio is 0 0.28 the height is 10 mm the length is 200 mm breadth is 200 mm the rate of loading is given in negative which means that the lo load is acting transverse direction vertically in the downward direction so the value of uh, e, uh, d it's eh cube divided by 12 into 1 minus mu square the value of a naught it is 16 into uh, q into d div uh, divided by pi raised to the power 6 into 1 divided by a square plus 1 by b square the whole square okay so uh, so so if you, you you can just plot it in matlab and you can check the results after plotting it in matlab okay so the deflection of the beam so you, i i want you to double check this code but if you look at the deflection of the rectangle plate it would look something like this okay the reflect deflection of the rectangular plate all right then uh, i hope this uh, this is useful uh, you can check so once you know the value of w what you can also do is uh, i'm sorry to show you a whole bunch of equations but i think i'm i have to show you the significance of finding w one of the significance of finding w is you can actually find the values of stress at any point so there you can see uh, i'm yes here we go you can find what is the value of stress uh, normal stress along the x direction normal stress along the y direction and also the shear stress okay so there you can see you can also find the stresses um, at any point okay i want you to double check the codes i want you to i invite you to run the code in the privacy of your room so you can check it through so that's it i think we have completed solving the differential equation of your rectangular plate that is yeah we have successfully solved the differential equation um of your rectangular plate that is subjected to uniformly distributed load thank you all for your patience i really appreciate your time thank you